Hi, this video will be about CSS, how to style your JavaFX application. So in one of my last videos, I was working with this. So this is going to be CSS in JavaFX. So some of you probably already seen CSS and maybe work with it a bit. And you know, there are different tags and stuff you can use and classes you can use ids and stuff like that and how does that actually work so that's what i'm going to show you in this video because css and javafx is not the same as in html a lot of it is actually the same but there are some differences that you need to be aware of so that you don't run into problems so let me show you first right now this is just an application where i can do some some searching on different uh, words and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's not skinned in any way. I don't have any CSS in here or anything like that. So this is what I'm going to look at for this uh, presentation. So I have kind of uh, some different subjects that I'm, I want to be looking at. And I think it will be something like this. We, I want to be looking at generally cascading style sheets and then I'll look at CSS classes and IDs, CSS and JavaFX, CSS and Scene Builder, and also I want just a small wraparound, I think, which is really cool, is using CSS and Google Fonts together um, so that we can have some really nice fonts here. So I'm using this finished application because there's a bit more to work on than if I was just to start from scratch. So what, how could we improve on, on this here? Let's try uh, starting out by looking at some, some CSS code examples. So if I go here and say CSS example, go to some web page like W3Schools, which is a really cool uh, guide for uh, CSS. So in here we can see there's something here like the ID selector. So this is an example of some CSS code in HTML. We can see that it is actually here. There is an hashtag or whatever we called it, uh, shop or whatever, and it says para one. And we can see that we hello world here is called para one. So whatever changes I make to the one that has the para one is going to be changed. So it says text align center, which will align Halo Wind in the center. So if I change this into blue, then it will change the text into blue. There are other things like we can do background color and we could set that to uh, yellow. And then we get a yellow background color like that. So the other thing is that we can select any tag in here. So this is a P tag. So we can actually put any tag in here. So if we want to do that, we can say, we simply just say that for any P, we want to do something special. And what we could do is we could set the background color for all paragraphs here to something other than yellow. It could be like, um, I don't know if there's something called teal. Yes, there is. So what you can see now is that all the paragraphs got teal back background color. And we could also set the text color maybe to white to make it a bit easier to read. like that. So now we have like teal background, white text. And what you can see is that P is a tag. So that is done first. So first it colors the text white and the background color teal. But you can see that Hello World is also, um, is actually, that that is also P. So the reason why that is not colored white text and teal background is the reason why it's called cascading style sheets. So cascading means that it tries one thing first and then it applies the next and then it applies the next. So kind of like if you paint the text white first and then afterwards you paint it blue, 
then you end up with blue text because that's the last one. So ID takes precedence over the P tag. So there are other things as well. There's also something called classes. So we can say class equals C1. This is in a class and paragraph end. And we can see that looks exactly just like the paragraph because we haven't done anything with the class. So when we want to specify classes, we have to use the dot first, and then we're going to say C1. And we're going to define that the color uh, for that must be yellow, the text color, sorry. And we press run. And now we can see that the color of the text becomes yellow because the classes take precedence over the p tag and the id takes precedence over the p tag as well. But what about, but if, what if I make hello world in this class C1, then the id actually takes precedence. Let me show you. So if the text was yellow now, it wouldn't be visible. So it goes like this. It try, first it colors using the tag then it colors using the classes, and then at last it uses the ID. So we use hashtags for IDs, and we use dot notation for the class name, and we use P without anything for paragraph, and we could even do something like we could specify body in this case, which is the entire document, so we can set the background color background color of the entire document, we could set that to something weird like blue, and then we get an entire blue background for everything. And again, you see, because the, the paragraph is inside of the body, that actually means that this, where it says this paragraphic is not affected by the style, it is affected by this style up here. So because body is outside of P, then P actually becomes the one that, that, that ends up doing. So it colors like the body first, and then it colors the paragraphs, then it colors the classes, then it colors the, um, the IDs at last. So we end up with IDs being the most important ones. So this way we can make cool things, um, uh, differently. So one of the things you should notice here is that why do we have IDs and classes? So the difference between an ID and a class is that ID is an identifier, meaning you can only have one of them. So you cannot have two IDs with the same name. So IDs are for uniquely identifying a single thing in your page. Whereas classes here are made for setting multiple tags with this, within the same class. So in here, for example, I made two classes of C1. So that means that both this and this have the same class, but it would be disallowed for me to do like this because then they would have the same ID and everything breaks and the world crumples and all of that stuff. So we cannot do that. That is illegal. That's totally crime writer. Let's not do that. We can try to see what happens and it actually does like that, but it's, oh, it's not good. It's, it's really illegal. So don't do that. It's not meant to be, please don't do that. Yes. So that's the basics of CSS and all of these tags, you can, you can look those up. You can use this cool uh, webpage, uh, W3Schools. They have a great list of all the CSS tags. And there's a lot more that you can do. There are some different things like you can do on hovering. So when you mouse hover over something, it changes style. A lot of stuff that I won't cover here because in the end, what I want to show is really how to use CSS and JavaFX. So this was just a bare introduction to cascading style sheets and um, what classes and IDs are.
So now I'm going to show how to do it in JavaFX in my next video.